I've decided to just bite the bullet finally and do a Ravens rebuild. I think the big holdup has been, we just don't know what's going to happen with Lamar Jackson. But I'm tired of the will they, won't they, like I'm watching The Office with Jim and Pam. I want to finally just get on with it. So I don't think Lamar Jackson's really going anywhere. For some reason, it, it seems like there's no interest around the league in a former MVP. Like maybe health is a concern. I can understand that. But he is wildly good. And if you're concerned about Lamar Jackson, the Browns should have been way more concerned with the quarterback they acquired. Ravens also recently signed Odell to a one-year deal, so he's going to be in this video as well, although I don't know what his future holds in Baltimore, but kind of a fun matchup nonetheless. I think when healthy, Odell is still a plus receiver in the league. We'll go over this roster. There are plenty of holes, but as long as we have Lamar Jackson, I think we're going to find success. So this team actually does look pretty good. Now, the only real issue, I would say, you know, you talk about the aging talent on the team, and I'll include Kevin Zeitler in that, 33 years old, is an 85 overall, which is nice, but how long is he going to hold that overall with normal development? I don't know. That'll be an interesting one to monitor. Does Daniel Fa'alele ever become a starting tackle for us? It's possible. Morgan Moses is 31, and I think that you could realistically develop Fa'alele for a year, behind Moses and then start him as a low 70 and pretty I mean be pretty satisfied with the results in Madden keep in mind and then getting Odell into this offense should be very very nice number 81 doesn't exactly look right on him to be honest after all the years of wearing 13 or even number three with the Rams JK Dobbins when healthy is very good they've got a great running back by committee type situation going on and I like their receiver room a lot more than everybody else seems to. And the addition of Odell, I think, solidifies that. Nelson Aguilar is a fine player. He's not, you know, the NFL superstar that maybe you hoped he would be coming out of the NFL draft uh, for the Eagles a number of years ago. Rashad Bateman, when healthy, I think is going to be very good. Devin Duvernay, I'm a big fan of. Hook him, of course. And um, it's, a, it's a decent group. Yeah, beyond that, James Prochet, Andy Isabella, not amazing. Uh, and I know they're probably still looking for that bona fide stud. We haven't really seen it from Rashad Bateman yet. But you got Mark Andrews, who is clearly the best receiving option on this team. And Lamar Jackson, obviously. Focal point of this rebuild, he's going to be sticking around. I'm not trading him. There's absolutely no way I trade Lamar Jackson. But as good as the offense looks, in my opinion, the issues start to show up a little bit more on the other side of the ball. Corner is a really, really, really bad position for this team. Marlon Humphrey's great. Trayvon Mullen, I don't know what you can expect from him in 2023. Don't have a lot of, I would say, depth at all. Daryl Worley, Brandon Stevens, who I talk about all the time. A converted uh, running back turned safety, turned corner, or vice versa. So the folks over at Pristine Auction have supplied me with a $10,000 sports memorabilia mystery box today. But before I show you any of the cool items that were in this and that were sent to me by Pristine Auction, let me tell you a little bit about the company. With over a thousand items ending daily, Pristine Auction specializes in autographed memorabilia, sports cards, coins, art, and collectibles. Whatever you can collect, they've got it. Pristine Auction works with the leading authentication companies, so you can be sure all items are 100% authentic. That includes Beckett, PSA, Fanatics, and more. Pristine Auction runs several auction formats, including multiple weekly auctions, a premium monthly auction, and my personal favorite, the day daily and 10 minute auction. They also have an iOS app available for download and a marketplace so you don't miss out on any of the action. And they've also supplied me good news for you guys with a $10 off registration code. So use registration code Bengal, hit the link in the description, check them out on social media at Pristine Auction. Links again are in the description. And then interestingly enough here, we have David Ojabo listed at right end, which is not gonna be a position that fits him at all in a 3-4. I will probably look to change this defensive structure. We're probably going to have Adafe Owe and David Ojabo be my rush ends. And then we'll have Roquan Smith, who's incredible. Patrick Queen, who's playing better as a result of Roquan Smith's addition. And then we're looking for a linebacker. Matt Abuike can play defensive tackle along with Michael Pierce. Travis Jones is not a bad option there either. But we'll at least start out like this. Marcus Williams was a free agent signing I was a big fan of, and I think Kyle Hamilton could not have gone to a better situation 
in the league than the Baltimore Ravens where he can play strong safety. I know he played some some nickel for them as well. I still don't really think that's a great spot for him uh, just because he's not that quick. But man, he is very, very good working downhill. And I, again, I think the Ravens were a perfect landing spot because with Marcus Williams, you don't have to worry about Kyle Hamilton playing over the top, which he just really doesn't have the ability to do. But you keep him in the box. You keep him, uh, you know, kind of moving around the field at times. He's going to be a player that makes plays, especially near the line of scrimmage. So he should develop really nicely for us. I'll probably try to focus on zone coverage if I can. A little bit low. See if we can get that into the 80s. Ooh, long-term development for Isaiah likely could be really, really nice. Probably more so as a trade piece than an actual player for us. He's like a big receiver, essentially. I really like Isaiah likely. He was a beast coming out of Coastal. And I think that at the very least... He's good trade value for us. I'm never going to move him to receiver. And two tight end sets just really don't do anything in the game. You really just see one tight end utilized and that's pretty much it. So Isaiah likely not really going to be too valuable to me. But getting superstar dev, he could be very valuable to another team. So we might at least consider the idea of trading him. It'd be kind of weird to just keep superstar dev on the team not really getting any snaps. I don't know. We get a lot of different things here. Nelson Aguilar wants to go ahead and work with Rashad Bateman. Getting open. Getting open for sure. And what's the toughest thing for him? Probably long routes is going to be the most effective. Develop him as a deep threat. I think he'll do that. Plus two to release and plus two to deep route running. Not anything absolutely incredible there, but we'll certainly take that. I don't know why we wouldn't. And then Tyler Linderbaum is going to keep getting moments with Kevin Zeitler. I didn't show the first one. He got, I think, plus two or three to pass block power. Nothing absolutely insane, but not too bad. And then Justin Matabuike, probably rushing the passer. Could be very, very nice. So plus three to power and finesse moves. That could jump up his overall lot. We're getting so many different moments here that I never really see at all. Like, maybe a few of them every so often, but we got like three or four all at once. Kind of insane. What are we doing with Linderbaum here? 2,500 XP, not too bad. I usually don't show these in videos either just because it's a lot. And I know that's not really what anyone cares about, but I think it's an important story. So you don't just go, hey, why did Linderbaum get like a two overall bump randomly? Even though he actually remains unchanged and likely randomly superstar dev would look weird. And because John Simpson is actually not too good right away, I could move the absolutely massive Daniel Fa'alele to left guard where he can just get in the way. Does he have the ability to pull like we're going to need him to if this were real? Yeah, probably not. Doesn't move a whole a whole great amount. Wow, Bucks 0 and 7. We are 4 and 3. Not doing really good or bad. We're just kind of hanging in there in a very close AFC North. You can see we are tied with the Steelers for the division lead. Browns and Bengals each have 3 wins apiece. So, you know, not really too much going on at the moment. But this is the big storyline, of course. Lamar Jackson will be a free agent. Are we able to extend him long term? Uh, the answer is going to be absolutely yes. It is a ton of money taking up a very large chunk of our cap room. But he's definitely worth it. I'm trying to take it down a little bit. Hopefully he's still interested. But he wants a lot more money than that and probably guaranteed as well. Although that's not really in the game. But all this really doesn't matter because we're going to go to the end of the season and then uh, import the 2023 NFL draft class. So it's not really... The record now is not going to matter because the playoffs doesn't matter. We're going to try to offer a high-risk contract to Lamar. And he actually ends up re-signing. Welcome back to Baltimore. And now we can officially simulate to the offseason, to the draft and see who we end up with in the back end of the first round. And in this fantasy land, the Broncos beat the Packers in the Super Bowl. Very odd. And here we are in the draft at number 23. The Raiders ended up taking Kalijah Kansi with 22, and there are some talented players still on the board. Bijan Robinson of Texas. Took him. Brian Branch from Alabama. You see, you see these prospects moving all around the board. Paris Johnson taking a big drop. Broderick Jones climbing all the way up alongside Joe Tippman. Jackson Smith and Jigba is here. Are all the receivers still available? Jordan Addison's off the board, but JSN is here. 
could be a very intriguing slot option if he were to be available at this spot. It's really, to me, we could go D-line, but I would say it is corner or receiver. Deontay Banks, I like. Really good athlete. End available at a position of need. Deontay Banks would be very good. Now, I know it's, why not get a receiver? JSN is here. He can play the slot. I kind of like the receiver room a little bit. As I mentioned earlier, I know it's like, how are you going to pass on JSN or Quentin Johnston? But I think some of these guys are going to be available in round two. Maybe a lot of them. The guy that's not going to be available is Deontay Banks. He fills an immediate need. Corner is a huge need. And we get to keep him in the state. Went to Maryland. The storyline is there. And he is now headed to Baltimore. 95 speed, 98 jumping, acceleration, change of direction, agility, all in a good spot. Hidden dev, it had to be the pick. I know there were other ways we could have went about that, but if we want to take a receiver, I think we could do so here or looked somewhere else entirely. We don't necessarily need to draft one here. Anton Harrison is not a bad idea. BJ Ojolari maybe. Josh Downs, if you want a slot receiver, is available, who I like a lot. Dion Henley would be perfect for what I want to do if we switch to a 4-3. Oh, no. Mark Andrews lost Superstar X Factor. I hate this game. I hate it a lot. <laughs> That's so annoying. Anyway, we have Odell, Bateman, Duvernay, Aguilar. The offense looks pretty good still. And then defensively, I think Kevin Zeitler may have retired, by the way. Defensively, Star Dev all over the place. I think because Roquan Smith lost Superstar Dev. Of course, of course, that would happen. Why, why wouldn't it? Honestly, it's, it's a great point. I think I'm going to take Dion Henley. I think I'd prefer to get another athletic linebacker in here. I think this is just a spot to get it done. We would complete our trio of linebackers. Again, we are switching to a 4-3. was waiting for something like this to make it happen. Henley is an incredible athlete. Really, really great sideline to sideline range. And I think should be a very nice pickup for us. Hidden Dev, great stuff for us. He's going to start immediately at outside linebacker. Roquan Smith probably stays on the inside. And Roquan Smith uh, will have, uh, of course, Patrick Queen go to the outside with Roquan staying at Mike. All right, round three. There are some receivers here if we wanted to go that direction. Rasheed Rice, Jaden Reed. Jaden Reed would offer a ton of speed. Cedric Tillman, who I like a lot, might have to boost him in the draft class a little bit. Julius Brents, if we wanted to complete uh, our corners, could go with an edge rusher. Oh, I don't really see anyone here. Is there anyone on the offensive line that we could take? Zion Nelson, Andrew Voorhees. Let's go with A.T. Perry out of Wake. Big-bodied receiver. Could be nice to add to the receiver room. He is a beast. Moves really, really well for his size. I would say a route technician, which you can't really say about a lot of six foot four, six foot five receivers. So A.C. Perry is somebody that I think the value makes sense here in round three very easily. And I'd rather, you know, take a top corner in the middle of the first round or back end of the first round rather than take a receiver at that spot, given what was on the board, which is pretty much everybody. I get it. Uh, and then just end up with with A.T. Perry in the third. I think that's nice. And then we could take a corner here if we wanted to. I think I will. Let's go with Darius Rush from South Carolina. Dude can absolutely fly. Big time speed, and we can use more cornerback depth, as I mentioned earlier. Corner still sitting on the board. You know what? Ooh. Could go with a receiver here. Ajan Bouti, big name. Rakeem Jarrett is here if we want to go Maryland. And I want, to, I want to keep it in Maryland. We're going to go with Rakeem Jarrett here. Maybe a developmental slot receiver to be a return man for us as well. And I'll let the CPU handle the rest. Not a bad draft for us, I don't think. So Deontay Banks is a nice 75 overall. Henley, 73. Perry, 73. These are guys that could eventually play for us. Jarrett's pretty good value in the fifth at 71 overall. And uh, the CPU drafted Rashad Torrance and Layden Robinson. Robinson maybe could end up playing for us, but I would hope not. I don't think A.T. Perry's going to play over Duvernay or Aguilar. Going to have him in the mix for right now. Ben Cleveland looks like he's going to start at guard position we need to improve at. I mean, really, there were no opportunities to in the draft, as far as I could tell. 
you know, if we spent a first round pick on one, maybe, but I would rather have Deontay Banks. And Banks is going to start for me ahead of Trayvon Mullen. Maybe Mullen can play the nickel. Maybe Deontay Banks will get reps in there. We could do something like that. And then uh, we're going to switch to a 4-3 defense, though. And I think that's going to work out a lot better with Owe and Ajabo. So the team is starting to take shape a little bit now that we've moved to a 4-3. D-line looking good. Just got to develop some of these guys. It's a shame about the dev traits. But what are you going to do? That is Madden 23. They will just downgrade anybody. So you've seen the offense. You've seen the defense. Now it's time to see some results. I think I'm going to simulate to the regular season and then set scouts. Receiver is a position we could potentially look at because things are going to change. I would say also interior offensive line, although probably wouldn't make a main scout do that. I don't know. We'll see what the draft class has to offer. Looks like there are going to be a number of quarterbacks. Manu Guerrero doesn't look like any of the other face scans even a little bit. There's like, <laughs> looks like natural lighting. I don't know. Yeah, we're definitely going to change our head scout. Wide receiver and right tackle are strengths of this class. So yeah, we'll get somebody looking at the receivers. And things are not going poorly. Six and O. Oh. Cardinals are performing great, by the way. We have the number one rushing offense, although points per game, we are only 22nd. Yet our defense has been so unbelievable that it doesn't seem to matter. Number one in passing yards per game allowed and rushing yards per game allowed. And we've only allowed about two touchdowns per game on average. Pretty awesome. Now, as nice as a 6-0 start is, we have free agents. And why do they not want to be here again? He wants to be in Louisiana. Of course, Patrick Queen went to LSU. What's J.K. Dobbins' excuse? West Coast power run. You're not a scheme fit. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure the Ravens drafted J.K. Dobbins because he wasn't a scheme fit. Maryland isn't even that cold. Warm weather states all the way red. I'm not saying it's Florida, but like it's not New England. It's not Massachusetts. Of course, Odell's going to be in here as well. Trayvon Mullen. We don't have the money for this. Is the thing. I can't really sign Odell to a long-term contract. I do one year 14. He's not considering shorter deals. I'm not really considering signing you then. I, I can't really work with that. Patrick Queen wants more. Everybody wants more. And the interest is not there. We don't really have the money for a lot of these guys. We do have the remaining cap because these guys haven't off they haven't accepted the offers. What do you mean we don't have the money? We we're not paying them. They've said no. Low risk to JK Dobbins. More money. We don't have more money. Okay, where can we save? Lamar is obviously not going anywhere. He's actually only going to get more expensive, so more difficult to work around. Ronnie Stanley's getting paid a ton. Can't really move him. Marlon Humphrey, same deal. We can't really move any of these guys is the problem. Oh, we are locked up. Gus Edwards, probably going to have to go. But the penalty for getting rid of these guys is so high. Oh, we are so screwed. Trading Tyus Bowser, a third round pick this year and a fifth next year for a second from Minnesota. It's projected to be pretty high right now, but it's midseason, so things could change. Tyus Bowser pretty much was just too expensive to hold on to. So... He was one of the sacrifices that had to be made. And the reality is that there might have to be more. We'll offer Patrick Queen a low-risk contract. It's as expensive as $10.8 million in the final year. Patrick Queen's back. Maybe an overpay for him, but we really just need him on the team. And then J.K. Dobbins, I fear we're going to have to do the same thing. But it's a running back. He's only 24, though. But I don't think he's going to accept like a two-year deal. And it would kind of handcuff us if he did. J.K. Dobbins just probably is not going to be on the team. And now I'm starting to wish, as great as Deontay Banks might be for us, I'm starting to wish I drafted Bijan. How did I pass on him? Trayvon Mullen should be an easy re-sign, though. Still a good age. His development should be really nice with the star dev. Decent overall. Needed him to be in there. I think we're probably going to end up franchise tagging Odell to keep him around. Duvernay going to have to walk. I still would like to bring back Justin Matawike. Don't know if we're going to be able to do that. Going to have to be an off-season thing, probably. But we're 7-0. Don't think we're going to end up going undefeated. But we should be guaranteed to make the playoffs at this point, pretty much. We are 8-0, though. 8-0. This Steelers game could be the all-deciding huge game for us. In-division matchup. They are second right now. If they beat us, not only do they end a perfect season, as, you know, still, it's we haven't had that many games. 
but they might be in a better position to win the league, win the division, I should say. It's eight and one versus six and four. I mean, it starts to look a little bit more dual. And we are nine and oh. Big moves. These Bengals are struggling. A pair of brothers in here, Carlos and Bryce Bear. Went to different places, but I don't know. Interesting. Power rusher with a block shed doesn't come up very often. 22 years old, 6'4", 265. Kind of a whatever athlete. I just, I like drafting the unbelievable athletes. I don't like drafting the guys that are like, eh, I'm good enough, maybe. I'll be honest, I don't love the draft class. We'll have to see what happens. I'm not like thrilled with anyone, which I guess is just a good position for us to stick and pick at the back end of the first round, which is what it looks like we're going to do right now at 9 and 0. Oh. You know what? Not too great of a second half of the season for us. I simulated straight to the end. 13 and 4. Like, still a great season. We got a first round bye, but obviously you go 9 and 0, oh, you expect some good things to continue. Lamar Jackson is just a function of the offense at this point. Unfortunately, it, this playbook is not really conducive to passing numbers because it's not a great season. But rushing, it is. J.K. Dobbins, 1,300 plus yards, 13 touchdowns, only averaging four yards per carry. But Lamar Jackson had nearly 1,000 yards and six touchdowns on 4.6 yards per carry. Not that impressive for a quarterback, the yards per carry number, but obviously the uh, attempts and yards is pretty crazy for a QB. And then receiving... You guys know we are a running offense, so these guys don't really feature too much. Mark Andrews with a nice year. Devin Duvernay found the end zone nine times. And then defensively, Patrick Queen with a number of tackles, seven for loss, 10 for Adafe Owe, who led the team with 15 sacks. Only five and a half for Pierce, three and a half for Queen, three and a half for Matabuike. Uh, We're not really getting a ton of pressure. It was really just Adafe Owe who played well, and then that was it. Marlon Humphrey with six picks, though. And in the division... We are going to take on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Can we beat the Steelers? We have the overall advantage. 87 overall. Nope, we're knocked out instantly. You know, I always struggle when I use the Ravens or mobile quarterbacks or the Ravens playbook in rebuilds. It just doesn't perform all that well. Yes, I know the number one offense in rushing yards per game, but it was the number 21 scoring offense. So do we stick with that? and settle for mediocrity or do we transition to a different playbook where maybe Lamar doesn't have the running numbers but is much more effective as a passer and the offense is better as a result the Steelers would make the Super Bowl and get crushed by Atlanta Taylor Heineke wins Super Bowl MVP Aaron Rodgers still on the Packers wins league MVP and uh, Drew Sanders got drafted to the Rams. Must have been a nice deal for them. One defensive rookie of the year. All right, what is our money looking like? We jumped up to over $50 million with the uh, salaries changing into the new league year. So we could potentially afford to bring back some of these guys. Odell is regressing, and we don't really need him. So I can't really bring back Odell. Devin DuVernay, eh, maybe. I still would like Justin Matabuike to be here. I would do a three-year deal. I think this makes sense to me. If we can't come to an agreement on this, I'm going to have to move on. Justin Metabuike is back, though. I would have gladly started Travis Jones at defensive tackle. And then J.K. Dobbins. I think I would just prefer to negotiate with a free agent. Maybe it's J.K. Dobbins. Maybe it's somebody else. He's not really interested in being here. Do I want to overpay a running back that doesn't want to be here? Probably not. Yeah, I'm comfortable just going into free agency, I think. Okay, free agency. Dexter Lawrence is here, and he wants to be here. Wants to play for John Harbaugh. That's interesting. You'd hope he goes back to the Giants, because that would be a good move for him. Brandon Ayuk could be good, too. Nobody's going after him. We do have a little bit of money here. We could we could figure out something. Okay, if Lamar Jackson was not Superstar X-Factor, which I think... No, he was. He was. He still is. I don't know why it's not activated. We need running back badly. Receiver, we have Rashad Bateman, A.T. Perry, and Nelson Aguilar. We could use Ayuk for sure. We still need an interior offensive lineman. File Lely is doing fine. But we could, you know, get two interior offensive linemen, kick him back at the tackle. Corner's fine. Our D-line looks pretty good, although there's not really any depth. There's no depth at D-line or linebacker at all. J.K. Dobbins is the top back, but DeAndre Swift actually wants to be here. And we don't have to pay him as much money, probably. So I'm going to opt to get DeAndre Swift, I would say. If we can get him on a good deal, like something like this, I'd be happy about it. 
Don't really want to overpay any of these guys, though. Okay, so I'm offering on... Let's see here. Brandon Ayuk, Jedrick Wills, because that's going to make our offensive line better, DeAndre Swift, and A.J. Dillon. We might have some trouble getting Ayuk, Swift, and Dillon. I think we're going to be able to get Jedrick Wills, though. You know, you never know what's going to happen, but I think... I think that's what's going to happen. But we get both of them. Ayuk signs immediately, as does Wills, so the offense improves. Still waiting on the running backs to do something. I fear that other teams might get involved. Falcons trying to outbid me for DeAndre Swift. More teams are in now. Chiefs probably going to get A.J. Dillon. I've offered a slightly better contract on Dillon. Swift, we're going to stay in the same spot. I hope we can get one of those. They're still not great. But we don't really have much money to do anything crazy. And those are the best running backs in the free agent market. They're not long-term deals. I'd like to get them on one-year deals, but it's just not realistic that we'd be able to sign those guys against the other teams pursuing them. So A.J. Dillon is gone. All we have left is DeAndre Swift. We need a starting running back. I would give you a juiced-up two-year deal. That should increase the interest. All right, that's maybe a little bit too much money. But something like that should get it done. And DeAndre Swift has signed on. Two years, six and a half million, basically, with a five point five or I mean five and a half bonus plus one either side whatever okay so this is what the offensive line looks like still could pursue an interior offensive lineman in the draft Brandon Ayuk is a big get I think the offensive playbook is going to have to change to something that's going to be a little bit more effective depth is a problem for us right now I can't really do much about it I think the guy's going to end up being Clarence Jefferson from Ohio State a awareness and impact blocking only 21 years old power archetype with both B pass and run block He's a good athlete, strong enough, fast, elite change of direction. That's the guy. We don't pick till pick number 28 with our divisional exit. Really feels like uh, we should be like two picks earlier. Is that going to take us out of the running for that center? Probably not, but maybe. Nah, we should be good. Quarterback going at number 27. We also pick at the top of the second round. It's basically like having multiple first round picks. Do we consider a receiver then? Jeffrey Pitts, 5'10, 187, 22 years old, with elite speed, ran in the four twos. But I saw another receiver uh, down the board a little bit. I had him on my watch list. Yeah, Broderick Whitlock, a deep route running, also very fast. Why not just take him you know, somewhere on day two? He is the best deep route running you can get. Like, hey, let's go, Clarence Jefferson here. Talked about it before the draft. It's coming to fruition. This is the guy. Welcome to Baltimore. 86 strength. Not amazing, but he moves pretty well for his size. 74 speed, 77 acceleration. 6'5", 318. He's a monster. Probably an instant starter at right guard. We might have found a steal, though. Mike Farrell from Texas. The next great Texas running back. 5'10", 226, 21 years old. A ball carrier vision, break tackle, and carrying. Skills all look good. A trucking, a stiff arm. Raiders are offering me number 49, number 89 projected next year, and a sixth next year as well. So we're going to go ahead and move down here to middle of the second round and uh, get a little bit of value and still probably just draft the same players anyway. I'm looking at that running back. Hopefully he is still available, and he is. I used my focus scouting on a number of running backs. Two of them are off the board already. I think I'm just going to stick and pick here. Mike Farrell, out of Texas, big time hook him, hidden dev, 93 acceleration, 88 agility, 80 change of direction, not that great, 92 speed, but 80 strength is very high for running back. A lot of A's, a lot of A's there. Now, juke move and spin move are horrific, but he's that's not his game. He's a tank, he's a little meatball, he's a bowling ball, just go through everybody. Now, we got Anton Randall L here. I think it's the receiver... I had him on my favorites list, and he's definitely gone. The receiver with a deep route running is off the board. We'll have to see what his overall is after the draft. Now, the last players on my favorites list here are two linebackers. Another guy out of Texas here. He was in the first round, I thought. And now his new projection is round three to four. He's not, like, amazing or anything. But A to C finesse moves, good block shed, good awareness, maybe. At this point in the draft, it's worth taking a shot. Not a great athlete. Is good depth, though, at least. And let's see how we did. End of the 2024 NFL Draft. Ooh. 
Very interesting. So Clarence Jefferson is only a 73. Still probably going to start him right away. He looks good enough. Not really too mad about that. But get this. Very, very lucky I decided to use focus points on running backs. Three running backs. Because I wasn't really thrilled with the rest of the class. Figured we'd just take a shot. Mike Farrell is a 78. Very, very good. The agility is high, even though Juke and Spin Move are low. 92 carrying. I think he's a beast. And he is actually the number one overall player in the class, by the way. The only 78. There's only one 77 and then some 76s before you get to the 75s. Maybe about five or six 76 overall players, including a running back down the board, too. Fifth round running back, that's a 76. But we did get the highest overall player in the class, only 21 years old. Probably going to start right away over DeAndre Swift. He's not going to be good year one, but if we can get some development, he's going to be a beast. I also didn't mention the best kicker in NFL history, Justin Tucker, but it's true. We do have an improved rookie, though, for our guard, probably. Yeah, it is. Clarence Jefferson. Uh, what is he good at? I think it was about even. We'll do pass block, and I think he's a power guy. So we'll develop finesse. Clarence Jefferson with a 10,000 XP boost? Okay, Ronnie Stanley, I appreciate you, bud. Okay, 2024, which is really 2025, as you guys will know. Uh, this is what the team looks like. Farrell's going to start because he's too good not to, in my opinion. And then defensively, not really anything has changed. We're just going to continue to develop the team. And then just make sure everyone is starting who needs to. Ajabo, Owe, Farrell, the power back. Swift can be third down back. That's fine. And Yuke in the slot. Deontay Banks in the nickel. And then Queen and Smith. As our sub linebackers, everything looks pretty good. I wish we could talk and play uh, Travis Jones more, but there's just not really a path to playing time for him right now with Michael Pierce for another year. Maybe, maybe there is a path. Pierce is still way better. Okay, three and four at the midseason mark. That is not good. Although this defensive tackle looks really good. A finesse and power moves. A tackle, only 21 years old. He is an incredible athlete. Yeah, I've traded up for a player like this before, and he was not generational. But man, Parker Randall looks really good. Rashard Tucker, great to elite speed as a power rusher at 251. Okay, we might have something here in this class. We might have some good players. Even this receiver. Who knows? A catch in traffic, not really a deep route runner. Not an amazing athlete. But actually, he's got short and medium A. Catch in traffic A. This is a really, really interesting draft class. And I think courtesy of Pristine Auction, I'm actually going to make a change in the background. You guys probably don't usually see the Tatis because where my chair is. However, with his suspension, I might as well replace him with one of my favorite players of all time that knows a little something about being suspended. And that is Ricky Williams. You guys know I'm a big Texas Longhorn fan. And I think Ricky's going to go in the back really nicely. Signed autograph jersey should perfectly take the place of Tatis. You can find this and many more on their website. They're very high quality with really awesome signatures too. This one actually is inscribed by Ricky Williams as well. I know he's got a number of really fun signatures that he does. This one has HT98, which I'm sure you guys can probably figure out means Heisman Trophy, which is the year he actually won it in 1998. But I think that's a nice change to freshen things up. They also sent some other jerseys that could potentially end up going into the rotation. Other uh, are... Some high potential choices here with Trey Lance, if he actually is able to stay healthy. I think he could still be really, really good for the 49ers. It's just got to see him play healthy and develop. A couple Cowboy jerseys here, which you guys know are not going to end up making the cut. But Deion Sanders and Ezekiel Elliott, kind of some cool ones. I know Zeke just got cut from the Cowboys. Even some really unique non-official jerseys. Here's a Niners George Kittle, kind of at the very bottom but, you know, it, it makes sense with the numbers. You wouldn't be able to even notice it was there anyway. And another very interesting one, Deion Sanders again. This time they're calling it with the Falcons. Kind of looks like the uh, like old Bucks pewter uniforms, but another Deion Sanders, Coach Prime. And we may end up decorating the background with new pictures. I haven't taken the bubble wrap off as I don't want to damage them before I find a spot. But Justin Jefferson, they got signed pictures in frames as well. Here is a massive signed Devontae Adams picture. And then probably my favorite, we got replica signed helmets. We got a Browns Nick Chubb. This one is so shiny and good looking. You know, the Browns uniforms don't always look that good, but the orange just really pops here. And that signature 
really doing the most. I mean, you can see my lighting setup. You can see Norm Macdonald in the picture screen. Then how about this? You guys know it's tough to find a bigger Bengals fan out there. Well, how about a replica speed white tiger Cincinnati Bengals Jamar Chase signed helmet? This one, you got to admit, looks so good by itself with that signature as well in the orange. They've got framed autographed jerseys. Here's Stefan Diggs that they sent me. You can see Bo Jackson in the back. They have autographed replica helmets. Here's a CD Lamb for the Cowboys. And autographed jerseys as well. So especially if you're into Cowboys stuff, man, no short supply of Pristine Auction. Check them out. Link is in the description. And thanks again to Pristine Auction for sponsoring the video. Trading Michael Pierce, a third round pick and a first round pick, my first round pick for Number four projected another first round pick from the Bears and a first round pick next year. I am trying to get in position for big time moves in this draft. Michael Pierce was just old and regressing and he's good now, but there's also a sick defensive tackle in this next draft class. And on top of that, we do have a decent replacement already on the roster in Travis Jones, who isn't as good, but is, I, I don't think, too much of a downgrade. Owe and Rashad Bateman are going to be free agents. Nelson Aguilar, the time to trade him is now. It's the trade deadline. I had made a big risk trading my first round pick. I'm really hoping we just step it up right here. I'm going to try and trade um, for another first round pick using Nelson Aguilar. Okay, we are trading to a division rival here. The Steelers were the only team with green interest in Aguilar, so I was kind of handcuffed in a way. Didn't have to make the trade, but Aguilar is going into the final year of his deal. I'd be surprised if he even ends up on the Steelers for longer than this year. We are trading a first-round pick next year that we just acquired from Chicago and a third-round pick this year, number 67, for number 7 projected. So I need the Steelers to continue to play badly, and we need to pick it up. We do not have money again. Now, we don't have too many free agents here. I never traded Macari or Morgan uh, Morgan Moses. We could look to do that. Rashad Bateman's really the big one. We should be able to bring him back pretty easily, actually. Move up the years. I just did. This game's so broken. And we can't afford OA right now. Patrick Macari in a fourth gets me a second round pick from the Giants who need help on the offensive line. Morgan Moses is the last one I want to move. Final year of his deal. We saved some money by letting him go as well, so we'll have more wiggle room in the offseason anyway, or, or at least, excuse me, midseason, because obviously when he is a free agent, we're not going to be paying him. When it's the actual offseason, that's going to factor in. But if we trade him right now, we might be able to extend OA uh, before it's too late. So we'll try to move him to any team, really, for anything. Dolphins can't afford him, but maybe we can get something back. Bijan would be nice. I don't think that's going to happen. We need it to make sense financially. We could do, like, get Xavier and Howard for a playoff run, but I don't think this would ever go through, even though he's old. Dolphins got Jalen Carter, no less. Okay. I don't really know that there's a trade anywhere here. Yeah, we're going to have to give up on it. So because wide receiver was my position to focus, we have 95% now on Michael Harper, who is not an amazing athlete, but is definitely very good. Definitely good. He's like the classic physical archetype. Pete Carroll, I think I think we're going to end up moving up in this draft for sure. This is a great looking tight end, by the way, too. We just, no reason to do that. Okay, we went on some type of run. I got to see this in the schedule to believe it because we were not looking that great. Loss, win, loss, loss, win, loss. And then from week seven on, win, win, by week, win, 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 win. I feel like DJ Khaled right now. All we do is win. Unbelievable second half of the year. I don't know that I've seen anything like this. Lamar Jackson throws for 5,000 yards, 34 touchdowns to eight picks. Mike Farrell, I mean, he had a lot of carries his rookie year. 16 touchdowns, though, is pretty awesome. 1,100 yards, only star dev. Uh, only averaged 3.8 yards per carry, but that's a good rookie year. Not that good, but I mean, the numbers, yards, and touchdowns look good. Didn't fumble in 309 carries, which is pretty awesome. Receiving, Brandon Ayuk was a good signing for us. Bateman had a great year. Got to bring him back. DeAndre Swift as a receiver. Carolina playbook for you. He went off. Mark Andrews did not really do much. A.T. Perry was fine. And then defensively, Roquan, of course, leading the team in tackles. 
10 tackles for loss for Matabuike, who had seven sacks. 13 and a half from Ojaba would lead the way, though. Six and a half for Owe. No one really standing out too many uh, interceptions. Just two is the highest from Kyle Hamilton and a couple of others. Clarence Jefferson only star development. I think we actually already knew that. He was not drafted last year, so that's not news, I guess. The running back having only star, though, is. No, no, it is. They are rookies. Okay, I kind of got mixed up for a second there. Uh, A.T. Perry. We'll do slot on him, get his short route running up. Ever since we traded those guys, we can't lose. Offense looks pretty good. Mark Andrews might go down to star development. Defense still looking pretty good. Doesn't mean we can't upgrade. This draft could end up being crazy. But we'll see if we can make a playoff run here. And it starts with beating Jacksonville. We have home field advantage. Gotta knock him out. Wow. 51-45. What happened to our defense? Forgot how to play. We just got... Cr I mean, we lost by six. But we allowed 51 points. Another first round exit for us. The Lions beat the Chiefs in the Super Bowl? What a run. Quarterback is Derek Alexander. He won Offensive Rookie of the Year and Super Bowl MVP and a Super Bowl as a rookie. That's never happened before. Jalen Hurts won League MVP. Mike Farrell's up to an 83. Going to be an 84 overall here. Did get upgraded to Superstar Dev. Won Offensive Rookie of the Year for the AFC. So that's why that happened. Didn't see him in the actual League News, whatever that area is. League Recap. Plus two juke moves, not too bad. Okay, players ready to negotiate. This is actually going to be huge for us. 17 mil. Uh, Dafe Owe does not want to be here. Bateman does. The rest don't matter. We need two players. Owe will get franchise tagged if it comes to it. But I think we should be able to offer him a very low risk. It's not too much money in my opinion. And Adafe Owe is back long term. And uh, then Rashad Bateman. I don't know why he didn't want to be here. Because he does want to be here. We'll offer low risk and yeah, he's back. Well, we didn't really have any money in free agency. Well, we don't have any because of OA and the value with our draft picks. We have to pay our picks. So that's being factored into the salary cap. Pick at number seven. I use my focus scouting points on the top three players in the draft. The order has changed up a little bit. These guys are all top five talents in the draft. True talents we know for sure. It's these three. So we have an outside linebacker with elite speed. Only B power and finesse moves though, but very well-rounded. A hit power, A awareness, A tackle. Like definitely looks really good. Very well-rounded, very good athlete, obviously. Elite strength too. Like, very, very interested in Richard Tucker. Michael Harper, this is who I'm trying to click on, is a physical receiver with good route running ability, except deep down the field. Does everything else pretty well. Doesn't really run all that well. But A run block, A short route running, A break tackle, A awareness, A carrying, A catch in traffic, A medium route running, A release, A stiff arm, B spectacular catch. The guy can play. And then Parker Randall from Iowa State was the number one overall player in the class. Only 21 years old. Elite speed and acceleration and agility, if that matters. Change of direction, I guess. Good strength. And then skills, it's a whole lot of A's. A awareness, B block shed. A finesse moves, A hit power, A impact blocking, that doesn't matter. A play rec, A power moves, A pursuit, A stamina, A tackle. I am being unrealistic. Strap in. Two top 10 picks, seven and nine. And we have first round pick next year, obviously. What can I do to get up to one? I would trade a player if I... Oh, we don't even have to. It was just a second round pick along with number nine. And we move up to one. No quarterback. So I guess the price tag was not quite as expensive. And I think... I think we go with the defensive tackle, Parker Randall. That's the guy. That's my Michael Pierce replacement. But he's got pass rush ability up the middle. Incredible athlete. Parker Randall, welcome to Baltimore. 89 strength. 86 acceleration, 78 speed, only 21 years old, star or better development. We know the ability uh, is incredible. So had to move up for that stud. I'd like to get all three. I don't know how possible that's going to be, but I would like to get all three. Rashard Tucker, he might go at two. I don't know. I didn't see the mock draft. I don't know who's interested in what. Getting Michael Harper could be big just because he's a really good receiver too. I don't know. This is a really tough call. I'd like to get all of them just because that would be really fun for me. Just don't know how feasible that is. We could definitely move up for one of them. 
It's going to be tough to get every one of them. All right, so number seven, a three next year and a six this year. Moves us up five spots to number two. We can guarantee one of them. I know what you're thinking. You've re-signed Adafi Owe. You have David Ojabo, who's continuing to get better. Why would you take... Oh, Jefferson has Superstar. How did he get upgraded? I thought offensive linemen don't get upgraded. Oh, he won Offensive Lineman of the Year as a rookie. I guess that's how it's done. Farrell, we know, has Superstar now. Likely could be involved in a trade. We don't necessarily need receiver... Patrick Queen up to superstar, but it wouldn't be bad. I just think that this guy could be unbelievable. You know, you're talking about a potential like Lawrence Taylor type build. I know it doesn't have A power moves or finesse moves. Jabo's really good. I'd like to get all three. I think the receiver is higher priority. Even in this offense. All right, Michael Harper from Washington State. I really want to draft the edge, but Michael Harper is going to be the one. Hidden development, of course. We know he's a top five talent in the class. 93, so I, I, you're not guaranteed that, by the way. But 93 acceleration, 90 agility, 93 change of direction at 6'4", 218 is absurd. 96 jumping and 89 speed. A little slow, but should throw or catch everything you throw at him. And um, should be a physical presence in the red zone. And is there any way... I can move up with the Giants here. It's going to be expensive to do so. I can include a player because every time we move up, you see my cap room goes down because we got to pay that rookie. I recognize how unrealistic this is, by the way. In case you thought there was a question about it, I recognize what's going on. The best I can do right now is two second round picks and a first. I'm cleaning out my entire draft this year and next year, and I'm not quite there. What I'm going to have to do is trade the future number 32 for a higher pick uh, with like a four and a five. So I traded into the 2025 draft. So that pick is going to be immediately more valuable. But I need... I don't know if I can get up to three. It's going to be tough. And especially tough because I can't trade a player. I'd love to give the Giants, you know, Travis Jones to make this trade work. But because we don't have cap room right now, it will not work that way. We have to only trade picks, and we're getting closer, but not quite there. I need to trade 29 and a 6 and a 7 to move up to, like, 24. That's, I don't know. It's not going to happen. Okay, two second-round picks gets me number 22. Uh, I'm going all in. It's got to be. It's my two first-round picks for the Giants number 3, and if they decline this, I'm going to be really sad. It has cost everything to move up for maybe a mid prospect. It's so close. Is the sixth round pick enough? It is. I know the most unrealistic draft ever. Go look at uh, what Mike Ditka gave up for Batman right there, Ricky Williams. I don't know if that point was accurate, but we're gonna go ahead and take the edge rusher here. The Ravens have had three first round picks all in a row at the very top of the draft. Rashard Tucker, welcome to Baltimore. 87 speed, 89 acceleration, 85 strength. I just want to draft good players, man. That's it. Ooh, negative 40 mil in available salary cap because I'm playing or I'm paying massive contracts to rookies. And Tucker's only a 76 overall. That's okay, though, because Harper's a 78. And Parker Randall is an 81 already. Power rusher, but run stop is great. 85 power moves and 92 hit power out of the draft. This might be the hit power generational defensive tackle. This looks very similar to the generational defensive tackle we followed in a video on this channel, Gerard Knight with the 49ers. If you're interested in those videos, I'd recommend checking them out. Just search following the career of a generational blank. They're in the rebuild playlist, but... You can, you know, search for whatever position you want. I think we might be looking at an X-Factor defensive tackle. So what does Tucker do exactly? I don't know yet. Yeah, we're going to see. We're going to find out. Rush end over a Jabo. Yeah, let's do that. Team looks pretty good. We got a little bit crazy. But you know what? It is April of Madden 23. We're going to be crazy if we want to have a little bit of fun. Simulate to the midseason mark. Hope we're doing well. All right, six and one at the midseason mark. Well, we've seen this story before, unfortunately. Number three offense, number five defense, though, is pretty fantastic. 
You have some trade offers, not really gonna be considering those at this time. Barrel up to an 85 overall. Ooh, and an ability slot. Let's go. Dude, look at this quarterback. Look at Jerry over here. A deep accuracy, A medium, A short, A under pressure. Good to great throw power. Yeah, he's pretty good. But the draft doesn't really matter that much to us because we traded it all away. <laughs> For, I mean, it turned out to be at least two good players. One maybe exceptional player and then one like, eh, we didn't really need to do that type player. Harper, we don't know his dev trait yet. He's not really playing a ton, but we could move him up. I just think he's receiver three on this team because we have Bateman, we have Ayuk. He can play over A.T. Perry, though, because he might have more potential. Um, I don't know why they keep moving Pharrell to fullback. I get, I get that, like, Swift is here, but at least stop doing that. And then defensively, Tucker has only star dev. Randall does have superstar X-Factor, though. And I don't know why it's not being unlocked here. But that would be kind of a game changer for us. Parker Randall. Yeah, I, he, he was worth moving up for, for sure. But, you know, the, the edge rusher, probably not. But you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, as they say. So, we made a move up. He's gonna, He still plays, but, you know. Playoff time. This has got to be the Super Bowl year here. I mean, we really went all out for it. We got a first round bye, though. 14 and 3. We got our quarterback under contract. We got some really good players. I think we're just in cruise control right now. Lamar had a great year throwing the football. 4,800 yards, 38 touchdowns to only 7 picks. Rushing, yeah. Farrell's starting to really unlock it. Over 1,000 yards rushing. Carries went way down because, I mean, Swift really split carries. But he had a great year, too. 800 yards, 4.2 per carry, 9 touchdowns. But the 21 from Farrell is what really stands out. Excellent season from him. And then receiving, Bateman did go over 1,000. DeAndre Swift, very close as a third down back. Ayuk, Harper. I mean, we really spread the football around a lot. But it's not about the I or the me. It's about the team. All right? Patrick Queen, great year. 15 tackles for loss for Matabuike. He also had six sacks. 13, though, for OA. The rookie, Parker Randall, had nine. Rashard Tucker, another rookie, had seven and a half. Ajabo really hasn't done much. He's like... A sometimes player I don't know he just doesn't have that high over or of an overall at rush end so I mean we start him at base defensive end but Rashard Tucker has just proven to be the better actual starter he's like 79 overall at that spot comparatively and Farrell's about to go up to an 88 overall Farrell plus one juke to spin uh it actually stays at an 87 change of direction also went up a little bit as well but yeah he is a tank he is a tank. Do we know the dev trade on the rookie wide receiver yet? I don't think so. Maybe we do. It is star, which is okay. It's not all we wanted. How do we not have the X-Factors lit up? Like, we own the ability to equip X-Factors on defense. Just not working? I mean, I guess it's not a surprise. It is Madden 23. Texans have made it to the divisional. They are led by Derek Stingley with Superstar X-Factor and also two made-up players, Brendan Stern and CJ Hart. I can call them made-up players. <laughs> Not uh, computer-generated, whatever, but a linebacker and a tight end. Seems like their rebuild is fully underway as they have at least three Superstar X-Factor players. We do host them in the playoffs here at M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland. And uh, hopefully this one goes smoothly for us and we're able to knock them out of the playoffs and... It'll be happy days. It's not off to a good start. But we tie things up at 7. Texans seem content on scoring a lot in this game. 10 points already. We have the lead 17-13 now after more Houston Texan points. It's going to be a one-score game this entire game, clearly. It's 20-20. to -20. Texans take the lead. And I think we're going to go ahead and jump in here. Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens. We have DeAndre Swift in the backfield. Ayuk is slot left. He is on... A little slot fade here. We're going to throw deep for him. Ayuk go up and get it. No defense. Brandon Ayuk into the end zone. Touchdown. Corner never found the ball. That's why you give your best receiver a chance sometime. And I will show you it's not rookie difficulty on arcade. It is classic all Madden simulation. That's just, you know, what you see in Madden sometimes. Corners forget how to play the position. And a huge punt. 
by the Texans could give us the lead. Gonna keep it up the middle. We got blocks here. All we have to do is get into field goal range. Justin Tucker is not missing. And we're sacked. Okay, I was just looking to our receivers. BJ Hill came in what seemed to be pretty much unblocked. So we still need to get into field goal range. We're not just, it's not a given that Justin Tucker could just drill from the logo here at uh, midfield. We're gonna need a few more yards. That'll really help us out. I think it was Rashad Bateman. Just over a minute to play here. Little check down, it's Farrell. Got big time power, that should be first. Approaching field goal range, hand it to the bowling ball. And he's tackled from behind. Let's go hurry up here. Still have timeouts. Wanna try to pass for it. Little check down, Bateman, we'll call a timeout. Need a few more yards. The reason I called a timeout is uh, so we could guarantee that we're gonna get a better play call in. And uh, I think that's exactly what we did. The call timeout with one second to go and hopefully drill a field goal. And they're gonna ice us. Does he have clutch kicker? Are we still gonna get iced? I'm not really sure. We are, but it is Justin Tucker. It's, I mean, we're, we're down the middle here. We should be able to drill it. He's got the ability that makes it go really slow. Hopefully that's in. Tucker, down the middle. It's never gonna miss. And we're moving on to the AFC Championship. Thank you, Justin Tucker. And Anthony Richardson is their quarterback, by the way. That's fun. Dion Henley gonna get a little bit of a boost here. He's an interesting prospect. You know, some people think he could be as good as linebacker one. I think it just depends what you want. Like, if, if you look at the top linebackers, I feel like there's a different flavor for everybody with Dion Henley and... Jack Campbell and Trenton Simpson, Drew Sanders. I feel like they're all different and all talented. Uh, Bill's in the conference championship here, by the way. I think Jack Campbell would be a good landing spot, uh, or Buffalo would be a good landing spot for Jack Campbell. Nice little Tremaine Edmonds replacement. The first round will be interesting. Diggs, White, and Miller, all X-Factors. 86 overall for Buffalo, though. They're beatable. Buffalo on the board first, but we answer with a field goal. It is currently a pretty low-scoring game here. Just 10-10 into the second quarter, deep into the second quarter as we take the lead, approaching halftime. Bills grab it right back. It is a back-and-forth game. Very competitive, but we're starting to really pull ahead here. A touchdown here would really put us in a great spot. Couldn't get it. And this fourth down could decide the game. Under two minutes to play. We're with Roquan Smith. Check down Josh Allen. He's throwing crossbody the end zone. Big hit Hamilton. It's a touchdown Buffalo. Whitlock holds on. Broderick Whitlock. I think that was the A deep route running receiver we were going to draft. That's a crazy play from Josh Allen. I don't know what else to say there. All right. Basically a uh, two minute offense here. Three timeouts. Get down the field. Surely Matt Milano is no match for Mark Andrews. We're going to throw it up. Andrews. Yeah, that's the move. High point it to the 95 overall tight end. I like that. A little bit of a runoff here. I see RB. I really do. We're going to go to DeAndre Swift. Don't want to get too crazy. I kind of want to throw it to Harper. You know, we spent such a high draft pick on him. But that's not the move when Ayuk is wide open up the middle of the field. Huge gain. Timeout, Buffalo. We smell blood. Buffalo knows... They might be going home. Give it to the power back. Farrell, just lower your shoulder. Timeout, Buffalo. Look at look at the power from Farrell. Down to the one-yard line, first and goal. And a touchdown certainly ends it here. I think we're going to try inside zone. You know, I, I really don't think I'm going to get screwed here. If you watch Giants franchise, you know that you should never score with any time on the clock because you never know. But... We're going to pop into the end zone there. Just 10 seconds to play. If the Bills come back and win it, you know what? Good on them. As Farrell is being carried by our rookie receiver. That should be the game. One yard touchdown. That is game over. Buffalo going home. We are moving on. Clarence Jefferson, by the way, has turned out to be a fantastic draft pick. He's going to be playing up to an 88 overall. And I never really take it interior offensive lineman or lineman in general in the first round but you're telling me in year two he's going to be in the playoffs playing up to an 88 overall 
That's absolutely phenomenal. He's on the fast track to being one of the best offensive linemen in the entire league. And he's, what, 22 years old? Going to be a good player to have for the Super Bowl. And we'll see the new dev traits. Ooh, Philadelphia Eagles, 88 overall. Our new dev traits have... Somebody's changed. Is it Tyler Linderbaum up to superstar development? I think it is. Yeah, he won Offensive Lineman of the Year. Or is it that the entire offensive line won Offensive Line of the Year? I don't know what any of these do, really. You know, I think I've probably said this before, but it's... I don't know if it's the eyes or what, but Tyler Linderbaum's face scan... And really just everything about him reminds me of Owen from Barnyard. And that's a really niche reference probably at this point. I said Owen. I don't know why I did that. Otis. For some reason. I think it's the eyes, dude. He just looks like Tyler Linderbaum in his face scan. There's, there's something about it. I don't know. I think I've said that before. But I don't know. I don't. It just it fits to me. Roquan Smith is up to superstar development again. Thank goodness. He'll go up even higher, 97 overall, at least for this Super Bowl game. Tim Donnelly. It's like very close to the NBA ref who is betting on games and working for the mob. Good stuff. The Bird Bowl. Eagles, Ravens, opposite facing logos. They mean business. They got Joe Mixon and Miles Jack. Those are superstar X-Factor players at this point. Interesting. Can we beat them? We are out to a 10-0 lead. Eagles finally on the board. We are trying to extend our lead and doing a pretty good a pretty good job of it. 20 to 7 right now. 23 to 7. Eagles are going to need some points quickly cuz our defense is playing great and our offense is playing even better. 36 points so far and that is the easiest Super Bowl victory of all time. 36 to 7. Lamar Jackson stays in Baltimore and wins it all bringing the Lombardi Trophy back. The best Baltimore quarterback since Joe Flacco. And before that, Trent Dilfer, the legendary line of Baltimore quarterbacks. <laughs> but you know what? They got it done. Lamar Jackson, MVP, and probably now Super Bowl MVP. Big time victory. That's going to do it for this video, guys. Unfortunately, no Odell in the Super Bowl winning team. Uh, we went crazy. But I think we got some crazy good results. That's going to do it for this video. Hit that subscribe button. Make sure you're subscribed. If you're not subscribed, make sure, please. And I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.